Would you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Last week on Trinity Sunday, we read the words from the end of Matthew's Gospel that have become known as the Great Commission. Those verses are included in the readings for Trinity Sunday because they're only one of a few places throughout Scripture that actually mention the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in one place. But the larger context here is a powerful moment in which the resurrected Christ appears to his disciples and sends them out into the world saying, Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Today's reading also comes from Matthew earlier in that gospel, and it's also a commissioning of the disciples to minister in Jesus' name. While you can read the words in your Worship from Home resources that are taken from Scripture, it sometimes helps to also hear them as a story, I think. So I want to share with you this retelling of this passage from the Seasons of the Spirit curriculum. It will take a bit of effort for us to picture what the scene was like. It happened long ago, and it's hard for us to imagine what things were like, for they were very different from now. But it may have been like a music festival or a sports final, a community event at which everyone from the town or suburb was gathered together. There was a buzz in the air. Everyone had come out to see Jesus. He'd been traveling throughout the territory. He'd been to lots of towns. He'd healed many people and had been telling everyone of the love of God that is for us all. As you might imagine, he'd attracted a lot of attention, been the center of many crowds. We don't know why this crowd was different from any of the others, but it was. There was something about the people gathered in this place that really tugged at Jesus' heartstrings. He felt how lonely and sad they were. Somehow knew that they'd lost their bearings and were struggling to find a way out of distress and into the joy of life. His immediate des desire was to do something to lighten the load they were enduring. For Jesus was someone full of compassion. There are not many people who understand the love of God as well as you do, he told the disciples. You've been traveling with me and you've seen how people's lives can be transformed when God enters their hearts. I can't be everywhere. I can't meet with everyone. So I want you to be part of what I'm doing. I want you to travel to the places I can't get to and tell those people you meet about God and God's great desire to release people from their suffering and bring them into a life of love and joy. The more of us who do this, the more God's love will spread throughout the world. Not everyone will welcome and receive your message. For some, it will mean they need to change in ways they are unwilling to do. Offer to teach them, but do not linger about trying to convince them, for there are others that need you. So the disciples went and did as Jesus had asked them. That was the beginning of something extraordinary. More than 2,000 years on from this story, we know about Jesus because ever since, followers of Jesus have traveled away from their safe places into all the regions of the world to tell all those who are feeling lost, lonely, or sad of the friendship and compassionate love of God. 
As 21st century disciples of Christ, we come to our Holy Scriptures listening for how its words speak to us today. In this time in which our own coming and going has been greatly limited, we might struggle more than usual to understand what it means for us in this moment to go or be sent, as Matthew says. The go that many of us are used to is that we go to church, but for months now we haven't been able to do that. Perhaps it helps us to remember that what the early Christian community looked like was not what our modern day churches look like. They didn't go to church either. Public worship in a temple or sanctuary was not the heart and soul of Christ's teachings, nor was it the heart and soul of the early church. Instead, small groups of believers gathered in homes or along lake shores or on mountainsides to discuss Jesus' teachings. As important as our weekly time in worship is to us as Christians, it is not the only way we are called to go. When Jesus tells his followers to go, when he sends them out, he gives some clear directives. And not all of them are easy to hear. Jesus isn't talking to them like some nominating committee representative trying to convince someone to serve on a board. He doesn't say, oh, you know, following me, it's not, it's not a lot of work, just a monthly meeting or two. No. He makes it plain that being sent is a challenging task. First of all, there's the work itself. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with skin diseases, and throw out demons. And then there are the work conditions. Give without demanding payment. Don't take a backpack or two shirts or sandals or even a walking stick. That is, be vulnerable and rely on the kindness of those around you. And speaking of those around you, Jesus says, watch out for people because they will hand you over to councils and they will beat you in their synagogues. They will haul you in front of governors and even kings because of me. But don't worry, Jesus says. Don't worry about how to speak or what you will say because what you say will be given to you at that moment. Because it isn't you doing the talking. It's the Holy Spirit making all of this possible. Now, if we're honest, this sounds like a lot more than most of us signed up for as Christians. We prefer a faith that allows us to show up at church once a week and feel like that's enough. But this time of physical distancing in which we cannot go to church is forcing us to rethink what it means to be the church, what it means to be people who are called to heal what is broken and cast out what is evil. And that call is particularly powerful in this moment in our country when we are reckoning with centuries of racial injustice and racism. How are we being asked to go in this moment? How are we being sent? Jesus' words of commissioning echo across time and they speak to us today. In the Great Commission, Jesus commanded his followers to make disciples. And as Reverend Mary Cipher says, perhaps our understanding of making disciples can change in this moment. Perhaps the disciple I first make is myself. Even now when most of us are staying home and not going many places, we can remember, as Reverend Cipher says, that being sent by God has never been confined by geography or travel. We are still called and sent by God regardless of our location. Each of us is sent in unique and different ways 
Each of us may go to different places. Each of us is invited to proclaim Christ's teaching through our own stories and our own experiences. We can serve by sharing scripture and inspiration with others, by offering our experiences of joy and hope in times of trouble. We can serve by healing, praying for healing for those who are sick, offering our gifts and our talents, by singing to a lonely friend over the telephone or recording a favorite story to send to the grandchildren. And we can serve by giving our money and resources to churches, community service agencies, and other organizations who are doing the work of justice. Friends, we are disciples, and we are surely called and sent by God just as those first disciples were. Where are our gifts most needed right now? How are we being called to live our faith and be the church in this moment? Whether we leave our homes or not, as followers of Christ, we are being sent to care for those for whom Christ had such compassion, those who were hurting and sick and in need of help. And we are being called just as he did to proclaim the good news of God's kingdom. Jesus told us the truth. It won't be easy. But he told us an even more powerful truth. I am with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. God is with you. So go. Amen.